Hello. So we've been called out to a swarm and it's a really nice easy one. It's hanging in the bush here and we've got to collect this and take it away. If we leave it to do its own thing, chances are it'll either go somewhere really inconvenient or with the weather, if it starts to rain, that will cause it real problems. So what we're gonna do, they're really at their most docile when they're like this, but I'm still gonna need to put a uh, bee suit on. Um, we'll pop over to the truck, we'll get the kit ready, pop the bee suit on and we'll show you how we collect a swarm. So we need a few bits of kit to be able to collect the swarm. Nothing terribly exciting. Um, one of the main things I need is a, a cardboard box. Um, this is an ideal size cardboard box. So we need that to collect them. And then we need just very simply a uh, pair of secateurs. Always, always carry a pair of secateurs uh, when you're, you're beekeeping. So we've got those and I need a queen excluder. So I've got a spare queen extruder there. And then that's about it. So what we can now do is we can now pop the bee suit on, go over there and collect the bees. So the secret with collecting a swarm is dead easy. Somewhere in the middle of there, there's a queen. If I get the queen into the box, everything else will follow. I'm not gonna mess about trying to find her. All I've got to do is knock the whole swarm into the box. If I can, I might cut off the branch, but here it's quite a nice little thorn bush, so I'm just gonna try and shake them into the box, and then hopefully the queen will be in there, and I'll show you in a minute how we can find out if she is, and uh, then all should be well. So I'm just gonna put my hood up now and shake the bees in. So here we go. Box underneath, get hold of the bush, give it a really good shake, all the bees in. I'm gonna pop my queen excluder over the top, like that. And then what I'm going to do is turn my box upside down like this. There we go. And then I'm just going to prop it open with a stick. And the reason for the queen excluder is if I've got the queen in here, that's now going to stop them absconding. Because if the queen can't go, they can't go. So all we're going to do now is wait a minute. I've got one or two bees still in the, in the bush, so I don't think the queen's there, but I'm just going to give them a shake, get them out. They'll be a bit confused because the bush will still smell of, of the queen, but we'll give them a, a bit of a, uh, a shake like that. And then we're just going to get, make sure the, the box is on top of the queen excluder properly. There we go, prop it up. I'll probably get a stone or something in a minute. So I've got my stone here, which gives me a better entrance. Pop that under there like that. That's perfect. So now I can just wait. And if I wait a few minutes, I'll see those bees going in and out. You can see here, here's the bees fanning. to show that we've got the queen inside. Now it's really important that even though I've got the, nearly all the bees in here, that I don't take this away at this stage because there's gonna be some flying bees out there. They're gonna be collecting nectar and pollen ready for starting a new colony. And if I took these bees away now, they're gonna come back, they're gonna be annoyed. So I've got to leave this here until this evening and this evening I'll come back and pick it up once the bees have stopped flying. So we're back here now and it's um, half past eight in the evening. So that's eight and a half hours since we actually put the swarm into the box. You can still see there's one or two flying. So we've still got to wait a bit before we can actually move them. Um, but when we do move them, we're going to take advantage of the fact that bees always walk uphill. So what should have happened if all's gone according to plan is the swarm that we put in here should now be at the top of this box and should even be starting to make some comb possibly at the top of the box. And when we are ready to move them, we're gonna turn the box upside down, seal the top, and then we can move the whole box in one go. And then what we're gonna do is put them into a new hive. And again, we're going to use the fact that bees always walk uphill to enable us to actually put them into their new hive. And you'll see how we do that when we get there. So I'm just going to wait a bit for these bees to stop flying and then we can turn the box upside down and we can start all over again with the bees and move them to their new home. 
Okay, so we've been waiting for simply ages. Um, we've just got one or two, so I'm just gonna give them a little bit of smoke to move them inside. And then I'm gonna turn the box upside down and very quickly cover it with a towel. So here we go, box goes upside down. Cover it with a towel. And there we go, I can now simply pick my box up and take it away and take them to their new home. All nice and sealed inside here. So, so here we are with the bee's new home and we've now got to get them out of the box and into the box. So we could just tip them all into the, the hive, but actually that's quite a problem. And also we can't inspect them as we do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn the cardboard box out onto this ramp that I've got in front of the hive. And then again, use this idea that bees will always walk uphill. And if all goes according to plan, they'll actually walk into the hive. So let's have a go. I'm just going to knock them down to the bottom because in moving them, they've all walked, walked back up. So there we go. And now I'm just going to turn the box upside down onto the ramp. And if we've got it right, they're going to walk in. So here we go. Here are all my bees. Turn them upside down. Give them a good knock on there. So here they go. And you can see the bees are walking uphill. And you can see they're naturally just walking to the hive. Here they go, and I can watch them walking in as they go. And they're doing this entirely naturally. This is exactly what they would do normally. I haven't put anything in the hive. There's no attractant in there or anything like that. There's just some empty frames. And you can see they're going in. Now I can keep my eye open for the queen. Um, it's unlikely I'm going to see her uh, in there, but uh, I can keep my eye open. If she was marked, then I'd be able to see her. And uh, because I can't see her, this encourages me. I know it's not one of mine because all my queens are marked, but they're also clipped. So it shouldn't be uh, one of my queens, but you never quite know. And there you can see, good as gold, they're all walking in. And this will take a little while now. It's normally a good time to have a cup of tea and maybe even a bit of cake if you've got one going, but tonight I haven't. So I'm uh, going to have to do without the cake tonight. And so I can just watch this absolute miracle of the bees walking into the hive. In fact, these are almost running in. This is not a huge swarm. It's a sort of medium sized swarm, but uh, still very gratifying to think that we've been able to rescue this and get them all into a nice hive. And we're looking to following when these will prosper. Now, once I've got all the bees inside, I'm actually going to put a queen excluder underneath the hive again, just to stop the queen absconding over the next couple of days. I'll come back in three days time, remove the queen excluder. All the bees will have been able to fly in and out, but not the queen. Uh, but I'll remove the queen excluder at that point, And that's when I'm going to feed them. Now I'm not going to feed them before then, because these bees will have gorged themselves on honey before they swarm. And uh, I want them to use up all of that honey because if there's anything nasty in the hive they've come from, chances are it'll be in that honey. And if they've eaten all the honey, then uh, it's absolutely fine then. Uh, it's all gone. I just don't want them storing it. So I won't feed them until uh, two to three days after they've gone into the hive. So we can just stand back a bit and watch them pouring into the hive. So you can see bees here now fanning on the outside. A really good indication that the queen's in there. They're fanning that queen pheromone out, encouraging all their sisters to go back in. And in a swarm, they really are nearly all the females. There's the odd drone in here, but very, very few. They really are a bit of a waste of space in a swarm. It's a mouth to feed that the bees could do without. 
but really good indication that the queen's in there. I didn't see her go in, but the bees know she's in there, fanning away like crazy. Some more here you can see on the outside, really indicating. And as I pan back now, you can see not too many left to go in. They're all still lining up and going in. Nice orderly queue. What I did a couple of minutes ago was to take the entrance block out. You can see it here. Give them more room to get in. And uh, they've gone in a bit quicker there. Still pouring in. Just looking at these again, these bees. Bottoms in the air, fanning like crazy. Queen pheromone filling the air and showing them the right way in. So once they've all gone in, which won't be very long now, I'll put that entrance block back in and I'll show you where we're going to put the Queen Excluder as well. And then we're done for the night. So as you can see now, pretty much all the bees have gone in. Definitely got the Queen in there, we know. So what we want to do now is put that entrance block back in and also put the Queen Excluder back. So I'm just going to move the hive back a little bit to put the entrance block in. Fit that in there, like that. And then I've just got to get the Queen Excluder in. Now this is so much easier if there's two of you. Uh, I'm going to take the roof off because that's one of the heavier bits. But what I just need to do is slide that Queen Excluder in underneath there. Pop it on like that. Now the worker bees can still fly in and out, no problem at all, but the queen can't get out. And that means once she starts laying in there, they won't want to abscond. But that keeps her in there until they've built some comb on those frames and she can start laying. And once that's happened, they'll, they'll stay there, absolutely no problem. So I'm just gonna leave the ramp there tonight so that the last bees can walk in or fly in, whichever they decide they prefer, and that's it. There we go, we've got our bees, we've caught our swarm, we've moved our swarm, we've hived our swarm. And hopefully, if all goes according to plan, this will be a nice colony of bees that will build up and hopefully produce some honey. Maybe not this year, it's, what is it now? It's the middle of June, so they might just produce a little bit, they might produce enough for their own stores for the winter. <laughs> if we're really, really lucky, they might produce some surplus, but actually, they might be of use for us for next year. So there you go, how to capture a swarm and how to put a swarm in a new hive. Hope you've enjoyed that. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and hopefully subscribe to the channel. The thumbs up really helps us with uh, YouTube statistics and we really are grateful for it. And we'll be back with a new video soon.